down here. Please check our family out right now. Bro, please, bro. We look alike. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Thinking back to my younger days in the early 2000s, the hip hop scene was dominated by quite a specific genre of sound, which was a mix of hip hop and kwaito music, which blessed us with the legends we look back on and thank for paving the wave of the hip hop genre in SA. I'm talking about legends like the amazing Zola 7, the late Mandoza, Hip Hop Antula, Pro Kid, and of course Brown Dash. Not to forget the legendary collective known as Squatter Camp, which blessed us with current legends like Sugar Smacks, Slicker, and of course the late Flubber. But let's not forget to mention the MCs who were once considered legends in the game. However, the actions have been seen as shameful and the game would rather leave these rappers in the past and not be brought up at all. Now I'll split between which two rappers I cover, whether it be the rapper Bricks or of course Pitch Black Afro. However, I decided on doing the latter first as I felt it'd be a more easier topic to speak on. Pitch Black Afro was born Tula Ngoba in 1979, growing up in the well-established Johannesburg township known as Soweto, where he grew up in the Orlando East neighborhood where he found his love for rap and dancing and realized that this was his best way of dealing with his stutter problem and express his talent. Apparently the Afro gimmick of his was what many considered unique and he had stated in the past that this was done on purpose so that fans would always associate their hairstyle with him as an artist and according to Afro, his biggest inspiration was his mother because of having to put up with him and sacrificing everything to make sure Afro could succeed. The whole process and how you, how you did it and don't be stingy because you know what I'm fit. The mouth that is eating alone is the insult to another mouth. That's what my mother used to tell me. Ha <laughs> ha! That makes no sense to me, okay? I, it's the lack of your belief. Yes, it's the lack of the belief that will leave you confused one day when things go bad, my friend. Huh? If you traditional healers are so powerful, then why didn't you use your spells to fight apartheid? Ah, we did. Ah, we We did. But the NC took all the credit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for coming into the studio. Um, yeah, very weird guy. Where did you find him? Hey. He decided that a path in music was meant for him and embarked on his journey to Josie in 1995 where he honed and perfected his skill of rapping, making his breakthrough in the hip-hop scene when he had won MC of the Week in the Rap Activity Jams on the YFM radio station back in 2001 where he would battle other callers in a rap battle hosted by Oskido and Rude Boy Paul. And this is how he was picked up by legendary house producer DJ Cleo, signing Afro as his first artist to his Will of Steel production label, where they got to work releasing his debut studio album Styling Jar in 2004, which featured the hit singles A Day In My Life, Peach Black Afro, and of course his biggest song, My Tofo Tofo. The album was a huge hit, because of its newer take on the hip-hop scene, adapting on the language known as Tzotzital, and the album went on to break records, selling a massive 50,000 copies, making it the best-selling album at the time, until Nyovest's Tzolofelo broke that record a decade later. Afro was on top of the game, being in demand by every club promoter, competing with the likes of Mandoza, Zola7, and other legends, where he himself 
was creating a legacy of his own in the hip hop scene. However, only two years later things started to spiral out of control and the beginning of the downfall would occur. Okay, let me go straight deep into it. This thing of just putting it first, I'm sure they explode out. Thank you for honoring me. Beautiful woman of Joe Wicks, keep us from what? I can't remember who says what and who goes when. Now it's reported by DJ Cleo that Afro had always dealt with a serious alcohol problem, describing Afro as an angel when sober, but trouble when under the influence. And he had noticed this as early as 2004, when Afro apparently burnt a hotel room in the Gaborone, and the following year he was arrested when an altercation occurred with security guards at the Cape Town Jazz Festival. Reports also came out that in 2006, Afro had been so wasted, he had assaulted one of his fans in a mall in Josie and went as far as smashing a retail store's window. So at this rate, I'm pretty sure his abuse of booze led him down a dark path. However, that same year, Afro released his second album, Split Ends, which featured the songs Mamelela Siajika and Never Let You Go. However, the album did not live up to expectations and by then, people were kind of over the pitch black Afro. And this album was considered a flop. This is when his downfall really began to spiral out of control, when by 2011, the MC had been involved in another altercation outside a club in Rosebank, where he managed to damage his leg, which was the worst thing to happen, as he had now not been able to do any live shows, which was a primary source of income for the MC. Because of this injury, Afro was losing money fast, as clubs stopped booking him and Afro was forced to stay at home while his leg had to heal, and this was apparently a wake up call to the rapper, making it clear of his, un of his unnecessary spending habits and his constant fallouts with his managers. And he had no choice but to leave his luxurious home in the suburbs and move back home with his mother in Orlando East Soweto. He even went as far as trying to start two rec recording studios and even a spaza shop, which all somehow became failed attempts and the rapper had tasked himself by recording, engineering and mastering his own music without the help of any label and it was reported that he was even playing for a band known as Bomb Shelter Beast in Bramfontein every second Tuesday. Afro still had hope, releasing his third album, Zonke Bonke, in 2013, featuring the songs Opti Kop and I Love You, featuring Preeminence and other songs. However, this album was also considered a failure by many, and by now it was clear that Afro had lost his touch and many of his fans had grown tired of Afro's sound. However, through his hard work and dedication to his art, he released his fourth album, Intem Nandi, in 2014 with songs like Black Is Back, Jaiva Nana and Josie City Life. However, by now all hope was lost from his fans as the album was another one added onto the list of his failed attempts at a comeback to the big leagues. And things eventually got even worse for the MC when his then wife Catherine Morisana was sadly found dead in a bed and breakfast in Yeovil on the 31st of December 2018 and the cause of death was blunt trauma. The news worsened when it was discovered that Afro may have been involved as they were together on that same night and Afro had even admitted that she had hit her head on the wall causing a death. However, he stated that he previously assaulted his wife. And worst of all, during all this, they were both under the influence of alcohol 
which we now know Afla has an alleged past when it comes to his drinking leading to altercations. The MC was arrested and a long drawn out case had begun where Afla eventually changed his story claiming that the blood found on the scene was due to her menstruating and that in fact he didn't lay a hand on her adding that because he was intoxicated at the time the police coerced him into saying these things because he felt the funeral policies wouldn't release the funds for a proper burial which the family needed. However, it was discovered that the state maintained that his wife was not on a period that day after an autopsy was done. It was also discovered that Afla had wiped blood from the scene to conceal evidence and he even hit the towel which was eventually discovered by police. Even more gruesome is how the rapper reportedly stuffed a sanitary pad on her genitals. After a long battle with the case, almost being thrown out due to witnesses failing to show any presence to testify, Afro was found not guilty for defeating the ends of justice. However, he was found guilty of culpable homicide after initially being charged with premeditated murder and was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment with half the sentence being suspended for 5 years, with the judge stating that Afro had been a poor witness as he was behaving difficult during questioning and argued with state prosecutors. However, the judge could not find any reason to a planned murder as both victim and accused were heavily intoxicated at the time and also believed that Afla was still denying the specific details of what actually happened even though he had apologized to the family of the deceased and saw no remorse on what he had done. Pitch Black Afro is still behind bars, however the MC doesn't seem to have much of a problem, even describing his time spent as a controlled holiday, where he was even concerned about gaining weight because he was eating too much and at one point was even asked to perform a show in the prison to boost prisoner morale. Nobody knows what really happened on that night, even his closest associates have heard otherwise. Even his benefactor Antile Ace Ngobo spoke to him the day after the incident when Afro had told him that Catherine had passed away in a sleep after hitting her head during a mugging incident when coming back from the store with cigarettes and that he had only noticed she was dead when he woke up the next day as he had slept while being intoxicated. I honestly don't know what to think about the whole situation. To me, Afro didn't seem okay all up there and maybe struggled with his mental health once he had tasted the life of fame even smiling and seeming happy in court. Even his close friend DJ Cleo had stated, he has always been a sucker for fame and attention. He can do anything for limelight, but in all of this, I think he needs help, and I cannot agree more. Maybe his struggle with his success contributed to his downfall and he couldn't handle the realization of being considered irrelevant. To go from living in poverty to then blowing heavy amounts of money in a fast and high life just to be chucked back into the broke lifestyle can't be easy for anyone and to then have a drinking problem on top of that is just the cherry on the top of the cake. However, it doesn't justify or excuse his actions against what occurred with his wife and this is a problem our sisters have been dealing with in South Africa and the injustices brought on to those who cause gender based violence. I hope upcoming artists take Pitch Black Afro's story as a lesson to always stay humble and keep a clear mind once they enter the world of celebrities and bear in mind that anything can happen that could impact their career greatly and they could be left with, uh, with nothing and just always remember that the life of a celebrity doesn't last forever. <laughs>